Hello everyone, so I'm Vector 2 for one here, back with another tutorial video. In this video we'll be learning a bit about items. So, in this tutorial video I'll be showing you how to create the item, and I'll also be showing you how to make the item eatable, usable, and into a weapon. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So, the first thing that you need to do is you need to open up Bridge and load up an add-on like in the previous tutorial. Now if you haven't watched that, I suggest you go watch that before continuing on with this video. Next, what we need to do is we need to click on more, or the three dots, then click on new file. Now, in the presets, you can actually search for blank item, or you can just click on the item dropdown and click on blank item. Next, we can set the image, which is optional. I will be leaving this blank for now, so I can show you how to change the texture. Next is to set the identifier. Now we want to make this a food item for the first part of the tutorial. So we'll just call this food. If you try and put anything that is capital or a dash, you can't put that in. You can only put in alphanumeric characters with underscores. But for now, we'll just be putting this as that food. Next is the display name. So this will be the display name that is displayed inside Minecraft when you hold the item. So we'll just be naming this food. Next, we'll click on create. And as you can see, Bridge has generated a food or blank item for us with the identifier of food and an icon for us to use. Now I'll be explaining how the structure of the item is actually laid out or instantiated. So in the behavior pack, you can see under the items folder, we can see our food.json, which is where the behavior of our item is actually set. So this will be containing everything from events of the item to how to make it eatable, the use duration, the animation for it, as well as a couple of other things. Next, under the resource pack, under the textures folder, and then the item folder, this is where the texture of our item is stored. Now, with the food, with the item textures, these have to be 16 by 16. If you make them any smaller or bigger, you would have to use inside the food.json behavior pack or behavior of your item, you would need to add in a render offset. And a render offset changes how your, your item is rendered in the entity's hand. So for example, if you had a food item that was 128 by 128 pixels, you would then need to do some calculations and use the render offset to make it scaled down to look like a normal item. But for now, we won't be using this at all. The last thing to make the item use the texture is under the textures folder and then item underscore texture dot json in the resource pack you can see inside the text data there is a key and this key matches inside the behavior of our item you can see under the minecraft dot dot icon component you can see there is a texture and that same key and this key is used to define the texture of where our item texture is so as you can see it is in textures items food textures items and food so that is all you need to know about that now if you wanted to make the item animated what you would need to do is you would need to make this an atlas of some sort 
and then inside the behavior of your food you'll then need to instantiate a frame and the frame just tells what texture to use inside that signal texture but for now that is an advanced topic and I will leave it for later so first of all what we want to do is to make the item eatable is we need to add a minecraft.food component now under the components add a colon this is specifically for the text editor for tree editor viewers just follow the format on your screen right now now for text editors add a trailing comma enter and then you can use control plus space to then get a list of all of the available components that you can add to your item behavior so right now what we want to do is we want to add the food component so we'll just type in food and there we go we can see there is a food component we can click on that and bridge will automatically generate this for us now inside these curly brackets press enter so we can get a new line then control plus space again and you can see all of the available variables that we can change for now what all we want to do is just make the item eatable all of these I will explain later or you can look at these descriptions if you want to for now let's just add the nutrition so this is how much food is given to the player so for now let's just set this to one next we need to change or actually we need to add two other components to make this minecraft food usable so right now in third person view we can actually see the player eating the item but in first person view you won't be seeing that at all and you will not be able to consume the item because there is no use time for how long the item is used for so next thing we need to do is we need to add in the use underscore duration component and this just defines how long before the item is actually used so how long you have to hold down the interact button to make the item usable so I just set this to one next is we need to add in the use underscore animation so this will just show us and play the sounds of the vanilla minecraft animations so let's just set this to eat and now you can save this and load up your minecraft game now i am currently in my world so all we have to do is we just need to slash give at s our food item and as you can see there is our food item so we can just give ourselves that and there you go it has filled exactly half a bar of my food so if we give ourselves two more we should be have we should be full there we go and that is all we have to do for the food item next I will be showing you how to make the item usable and do all sorts of custom stuff that you want with it so as before just create a new blank item set this item to whatever you want the identifier to what you if you want I'll just say this usable and we'll just set this to usable item 
I believe I also spelled that wrong. Okay, there we go. Now let's hit click on create. And as you can see, Bridge has done the exact same thing, made our item in game. So, to make this item usable, all you have to do is do the same thing as before as adding a new component. And all you have to do is you have to choose between the on use or on use on. So on use is something that will make the player interact with the item no matter if they're looking at a block or not. Minecraft dot on use on is something that is specific to when the player is using the item on a block or is facing a block and is interacting with the item. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be only using on use. Next, all we have to do is add an event trigger. Now, as you can see, if we add that in, bridge generates another variable or another brackets and a couple more variables inside those brackets. Now, the condition variable is is using a MoLang expression in in order to evaluate to true to actually run the event when you're using the item. If not, the event won't run. Next is the actual event. Now I'll be showing you how to create this later. So we can just skip past that for now and we can we can look at the target. So the target, in short, is just who to trigger the event on. So, first of all, what we need to do is we need to create our event. So, as you can see, there is no event that we can currently use. Bridge doesn't give us any suggestions. So, we need to create our event. Now to do this, go just outside or just inside the minecraft.item so it would be just outside the component just outside the closing brace of the component add a trailing comma and then as you can see we've got events so we click on that now we can set or create an event and to do this all we have to do is just add in these apostrophes and then we'll put in our identifier or the prefix and then we can name this anything we want so for example we'll just make this example so you can name this anything you want it doesn't have to be signed dot example you can just be example if you want but for proper use, that what most add-on developers do is just their prefix and the name of their event. Next, you add, need to add in a column and then a new object. So these curly braces. Now, that is all we need to do to actually create our event. Next, we can actually add our event. And as you can see, there is our event. So we can just click on that and set the event to this. Next, we'll set the target. So inside the target, the most common one to set is other. Or it can be self other. But you can put this as other. So, oh, that is not correct. It looks like self. Yes, okay. I made a mistake there. So, self is actually the one that you want to use as the most common one. And this will make it validated. So, target self. Next, inside our event, we can do anything inside this event. So, there are a lot of events that we can actually use. We can actually shoot an arrow, we can randomize 
certain things, we can damage, we can do all sorts of cool things. So for this tutorial, I'll just be doing something such as shoot. And inside the shoot, we have a couple more variables. So we can choose the projectile and the target to shoot from. So for now, we'll just set the projectile as whatever you want. You could shoot a chicken. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but for funny sakes, uh, probably. But for now, we'll just be choosing arrow. Next, we'll choose the launch power. So we'll just set this to something such as five. And then the target is the item or the target that we want to shoot from. So we'll just set this to other. Since this is the most common one, since we're already using self and then other, which is the player. Now we can save that and we can actually view this in game. Now I have given myself the item and as you can see if I interact with it we have got basically a machine gun that shoots arrows and that is all we, you pretty much need to know about how using an item works. Now there is a shootable component that we can actually use and it is a version of the bow that you can actually modify but I will not be showing this in the video. So let's move on to the next part of this tutorial. Now the last thing we'll be doing is making a melee weapon that deals damage. So as before we'll create a new file and a new blank item. Now before anyone mentions this Bridge does have a sword preset that we can use but for those who are not using Bridge and do not have this option we'll just be creating a blank item so we'll be starting from scratch so let's just make this a hittable and hittable item identify and display them so we'll create the item now all you have to do in this all you have to do is just inside the components add a damage component and all this does is it just sets the damage an item deals so we'll just say something like two hearts which is four since a heart is pretty much two hearts now that is all you have to do but for extra customizations you can add in the weapon component and what this does is it allows you to add certain events on certain triggers so on hurt entity this just basically makes it so if you hurt an entity you can just run an event to set the entity on fire for example but for now we won't be doing that so we can just remove this. <coughs> so, since we've already actually set this up, we can actually go into game and view what it looks like. Now, as you can see, I have got myself the hittable item, custom item. And if we look at it, it doesn't actually show anything currently. But if we hit the sheep, we can actually deal two hearts or two damage to it and if we were to hit it with our normal item hand it takes a lot more so the item is actually working now as you can see with our item we're not actually holding it properly like the sword for example as you can see the sword is actually rotated 90 degrees while our item is not also it does not actually show us the attack damage. So, to fix this, all we have to do is just add in the weapon component. We don't have to do anything with this. So this will just specifically show how much damage we can deal. And then the other thing is the hand equipped. 
and this will just rotate the 90 the, the item 90 degrees just like the sword so let's just save that reload minecraft and as you can see our item is like that now it is a little bit big but I think that's how Minecraft renders certain things. So, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye!